Our second goal is to expose the works of darkness, starting with entertainment, a device the devil uses to control your mind and soul. Why? Why? Because these are the subjects that are interwoven into a lot of your entertainment. Don't let them burn. This is Chris from Don't Let Them Burn. Welcome to our movie review program of Lego Batman. And before we start, we're just going to let you know that this is a Christian review to warn parents about some of the hidden things in the movies. And this movie has a lot of homosexual undertones and overtones in some senses. And we just want to warn parents before they take, I know the movie has been out for like two weeks already, but hey, never late, right? You're going to rent it. You're going to um, possibly watch it on your streaming program later on. Who knows? But it's really good for parents to know what's going on in the movies. I want to also warn you that this review is filled with spoilers. So if you don't like spoilers, now's the time to back out. If you're easily offended, now's the time to back out. My guest today is Kita, and she's going to help me review this interesting, funny movie that's well made and produced somewhat, well, very silly. But you know what? Many people are going out to see this movie and it's making a lot of money. So guess what? Let's get into it. Kita? Hey, I'm ecstatic to be on this show. Um, I'm happy to be able to dissect this information because I know a lot of kids will love this movie because it's Batman, fun, it's a silly movie, so a lot of the subliminal messages will go over their head. It's just good to know what your kids will be watching and what will be infiltrated into these movies. So yeah, let's get started. Well, it's interesting how this movie started out. You have Joker bringing forth his plan to basically put a bomb into the city and they're attacking and you see this woman on top of a, a pile of whatever it is, debris or whatever. And it turns out that this woman is Batman. So there we have the first innuendo that's going along with the agenda today, cross-dressing. And you know, some people don't find it offensive, some people do, and uh, I just think that this is part of the brainwashing a lot of kids are getting today with this whole agenda that's been permeating society even in shows like arrow and supergirl flash and, and tv shows like that we need to have our eyes wide open not wide shut Kita? yeah and it's funny that you mentioned that basically they want these things to be normalized in society that's why you'll see a lot of uh, gay couples, cross-dressing, basically showing that it's okay to be with the same gender, dress like the opposite gender. That's the whole point of it. They want it to be normal, which is why they have to put it in so much. So. Yeah, well, you know, it's also interesting how in this movie, you see Batman and the Joker in the beginning. Um, after he attacks, Batman is catching the Joker and says he'll never escape. And then the Joker tells Batman that he's his greatest enemy. Batman basically disagrees with him, but the Joker tries to convince him with homosexual undertones. Batman says, I'm fighting a few different people. I like fighting around. The Joker says, I'm fine with you fighting other people if you want to do that, but what we have is special. And then Batman sees how creepy the Joker is becoming and says that he doesn't do relationships. Batman and the Joker are not a thing. I don't need anyone. You mean nothing to me. And then he says, no, no one else does either. But you know, you see this, this kind of thing where it's so suggestive. What we're going to lay out for you all is we're going to go through the whole movie to show you how this is not just a thought in my head or Keita's head. This is pretty much blatant. And we're going to show you what's going on with Robin, the Joker and Batman, because these are the three um, people that they basically put this idea uh, encapsulated into their characters. Yeah, a good example of this would be in the part where Batman, he arrives at the Batcave and the computer basically informs him that he received pieces of mail. So you would think that it's just something simple, like, oh yeah, bills or something. But then the first thing she says is that he has panty savers. I honestly don't even know what that means, but I wouldn't really add the word panty in a kid's movie. <laughs> um, 
And then she says how he has two bills, and I'm like, okay, yeah. And then she says how he has a coupon for Bed Bath & Beyond. From experience, I don't really know any man who shops at Bed Bath & Beyond, but I just find this to be very funny how they they can just slip these little things in and it'll just fly past their head. Yeah, I mean, and to be fair, you know, there are men that go there to buy things for their wives yeah. or their girlfriends, right? We, we know that, right? But this is so suggestive. It's, it's like we know that Batman isn't buying anything for any girlfriends, any wives, because he's a, a man that's alone in a, in a, with um, you know his butler, and he's basically self-absorbed, the spirit of vengeance. In this movie, he's very self-absorbed. And it's, the, the overarching thing about this movie is not really the homosexual thing. That's the second tier. The overarching storyline is really about family. It's very interesting. The next point we want to talk about is his adopted son, Dick Grayson, which he meets at a, a function. And, well, he's oddly obsessed with Bruce Wayne, but we'll, 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 we'll leave that to, to your mind to, to figure that one out. And he basically asks Bruce Wayne how to get adopted. One of the items on his list is an eyeliner. Now, from my experience, not too many men like to put on eyeliner, except, you know, if they're effeminate or gay, or, or like the emo style or, emo. or something. And most of those emo guys are what? Gay, yeah. Usually. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So uh, that's just another point to, to put out to you uh, listeners. And so then there's another one where Bruce Wayne is the one that, that adopted Dick Grayson. He ends up getting into the Batcave. Uh, I think through Alfred's help, if I'm not mistaken. He hasn't seen Bruce Wayne since he's been to the mansion for, I think... Uh, two three weeks or something like that i think it was just one week. just one week yeah okay all right so batman is is looking up how to get to joker and how to basically launch him into the phantom zone and so he has to go to superman's fortress to get the the little machine to that blasts people into the phantom zone so anyway batman tells dick grayson who is robin that he has two dads and they can share custody because Dick Grayson is asking, like, how can I go with you if, if basically I got to get permission from my dad? And so he's telling him that he has two dads and that they're going to share custody. Now, th th this is the same thing that's going on in our society now where two dads or two moms, basically the basic new definition of the odd couples. It's funny how the writers of the movie are so creative that they found a way to use Batman's well, Bruce Wayne's disguise as Batman as a way to add in the two dads thing because they know he doesn't want to reveal himself to him. So that's the way that they added that in. Exactly. And then Dick Grayson, again, also Robin, he says to Batman that I had no dad. Then one dad. Now I have two dads. It's raining dads. It was. It, it's so much going on there, but we're not going to, uh, you know, extrapolate that too much. I guess we can get into the Joker a bit. He's also very weirdly obsessed with Batman as far as wanting to be his greatest enemy, but he surrenders himself and says how there is no us, so there's no point in fighting Batman anymore. This kind of gives the idea of a actual relationship on how both partners need to comply to work it out but since batman's not really agreeing with this little agenda he has going on he he basically uses this to bring in another plot point yeah he does and th then a little bit later the joker tells batman that he can't fight him anymore he's off the market i'm off the menu you won't get to fight any of this with suggestive mannerisms sort of like um rubbing his body in a sense you know kind of like a woman would do yeah like a woman would yeah. do so you know there there's another point that that some people might have missed but it was pretty blatant um i think some people just ignore this stuff but anyway so batman and robin visit superman's fortress of solitude batman is instructing robin how to sneak into the fortress he does a couple of moves while batman is instructing him then he starts acting like a ballerina <laughs> Even his outfit turns into a ballerina, and 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 it, and it pauses for you know maybe one or two seconds, and then goes to whatever else he's doing. 
But the whole point is, again, cross-dressing, um, being effeminate. So Robin is a whole part of this too. And in fact, let me point out that his cape is all glittery, like a woman's would be. You know, and I know that in show business that some men wear glittery outfits. I know that. But we're talking about just this right here. It's just, it's kind of like um, we have a bisexual dad raising a somewhat homosexual acting kid. He's a kid in this movie. So anyway. Yeah, and to interject back on when Batman was um, instructing Robin on what to do, he just told him to do back flips and front flips. So I don't see why it was necessary for him to make him dance like a ballerina when all he's doing is going into an orb to retrieve the gun to blast people into the Phantom Zone. So I don't see how those two correlate. So I find I found it kind of silly, but... <laughs> well, you know, one of the biggest points of this movie is, is to be silly. However, they take the silliness and shove in part of their agenda and I think the whole thing is to make you laugh at things that normally you would you probably wouldn't laugh at if you're if your boy comes home dressed like a ballerina most people wouldn't laugh at that most people would kind of be like what is going on you know so it, it's a kind of um so somewhat predictive programming or just brainwashing in general so you know we, we have to look at this and and try to dissect it the way we can for ourselves now going into the rest of the movie, Batman breaks into the prison where the Joker is being held. The Joker says, looks like you're going through a lot of trouble for little old me. Batman says, you're trying to entrap me into a relationship. It's not going to work. Then the Joker starts um, finishing Batman's sentences to prove that he's all in Batman's head. What about that? Yeah, that just leads back to putting the subliminal messages in um basically they're trying to show how there's a secret relationship going on um on how batman basically doesn't really want anything to do with joker in a sense but joker really wants to be in a relationship with him as far as being quote-unquote enemies but they know they're really trying to make it seem like an actual couple so he he kind of acts like a woman in a sense the joker his mannerisms and just the way he talks so well he's the guy wearing lipstick well yeah yeah <laughs> pretty much but um <laughs> yeah it's just funny how they add that in and you won't even notice unless you really look into the dialogue and really dissect yeah you just gotta do your due diligence okay so after jail and batman and robin the commissioner suggests that robin needs some pants and he says, I'm good the way I am. Well, let, let's backtrack a little bit because I think we missed that part. When um, the, when Robin first got his suit, he basically didn't put on any pants. And he liked the way it felt then too. So again, we have a child running around with no pants. And, you know, because it's a Lego character, no one's taking offense at that but it's very suggestive yeah it's although it is a lego character like you mentioned it's still pretty bad if you really look into it because would you really let your kid just walk around without pants because it feels nice he's okay like do you know how much people would be looking especially perverts mm -hmm. that's not really a good message to be sending Basically, do whatever you want if it makes you feel good, I guess. Yeah, that sounds like the first uh, law of Satanism. Do what thou wilt, right? So anyway, uh, Joker breaks into Batman's cave and says, I'm rubbing my butt all over your stuff. We're going to have to call this the buttmobile. But l l let's, l let's not pay attention too much to the second part of that. It's the I'm rubbing my butt all over your stuff. That could take That could be taken so many different ways, but it's highly suggestive. And what? person even an evil person in their right mind well no evil person is in their right mind right but they will who will go and rub their buttocks all over someone's uh, things their property they they basically are taking authority in a very sexual and vulgar way 
Yeah, um, it's of course kids will not really pay attention to that as closely as a parent would. Of course, they always add in butt jokes or fart jokes because kids will laugh at it. That's why he said, oh, going to have to call this the butt mobile. It's like, ha, 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 whoa. But you don't notice the first part. It's kind of a bit too sexual to be in there, but they have to end it with that butt mobile joke. So it'll just fly over your head. Right. And so later on, the Joker taunts Batman to say the words, I hate you. He just kind of agrees to hate him too. He won't say the words, but it's just it just feels like it's reverse psychology. And then the Joker says that he won't be a part of a one-sided relationship. He goes on talking about he's moving on, and on the way out, he's going to blow up Gotham. So, you know, this is clearly something that's more than what it seems on the onset. This is just pure pop- propaganda from the LGBTQRSTUVWXYZ <laughs> community. So... <laughs> it, it's just it's just um it's just very important because this is flooding into our kids programming um especially from disney who is putting these homosexual things inside of their movies and, and some of this has already been there just people just don't see it but now it's more blatant but go ahead yeah just in about any tv show you see now there's always one gay or lesbian couple and it's not even the fact that they're in there, but sometimes it has nothing to do with the plot. They just had to. Like, had right, to. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, it wasn't even necessary. Exactly. And so, basically, the Joker is, is finishing his plot to destroy Gotham, and Batman is basically confronting him, and the Joker puts on his lipstick, just like a female would when she's kind of taunting you or suggesting to you that, um, you can't have her. And then Batman asked him to help stop the city from tearing apart because the bomb that went off, it basically split Gotham in two and Gotham is on sort of like a plank-like foundation. And so anyway, Batman tells the Joker that he can't do it without him, then proceeds to tell him that he's the reason that he gets up in the morning and does everything that he lives for. He says... If you help me save Gotham, you'll help me save us. Batman and the Joker. <laughs> what do you say? And then he says, you had me at... The Joker says, you had me at shut up. So you can see that. Who's the female counterpart here? Who's the male? And what they're trying to do and put inside of not only your children's head, but your head also. Yeah, basically the whole, I guess not really moral of the story but the whole thing they're trying to do here is joker's the female batman's the man and joker's basically obsessed with him and trying to get him to want him as far as he wants to be the only one for him he doesn't care if he fights other people but he wants to be the main one in his life so that's basically the whole agenda yes indeed that's a great way to sum it up so Thank you for listening to this review of Lego Batman. This is our first review on Don't Let Them Burn. Our next review will be on Logan. And it's a pretty interesting movie, but we'll get to that when we get there. See you later. If you like our videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all our frequent updates.